so much for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, so I went online the other day, and I was looking at the most popular questions that people type on Google. The most popular questions. And here are some of them. Can men get pregnant? <laughs> I'm sure we've all asked that question at one point or another in our lives, right? Here's another one. Who am I? Till you figure out who you are. My name is Laurent, and I live in Maryland. So there, I just save you 15 minutes. How can I lose weight fast? Now, that question doesn't surprise me. I've been in the fitness business for 25 years. I hear that all the time. But the part of that question that still ticks me a little bit is the speed at which people want to achieve their goal. How could I lose weight fast? Now, Americans spend $72 billion a year on weight loss products, fitness gadgets, trinkets, potions, you name it. $72 billion a year. You would think we would all look like Greek gods. But we don't. Between 1999 and 2018, obesity rates went from 30.5% to 42.2%. That's a 40% increase. And severe obesity went from 4.7 to 9.2, almost doubled. So obviously, we're not doing so well. So then I asked myself, are we alone in the world? But instead of looking at other countries that are doing worse than us, I said to myself, why don't we look at countries that are doing better than us? Maybe we could learn something from them. So I went on Google, I love the Google, <laughs> and I wrote, what are the healthiest countries in the world? There's a big list that came out. And here are some of the countries that I found on this list. Spain, Italy, Israel, Portugal. Now I know for a fact that they smoke a lot in those countries. <laughs> a lot of cigarettes. I know they'll probably have other unhealthy habits as well. But some, somehow, they're doing something that counteracts the effect of those bad habits. So I went back on Google, and I wrote, what do those countries have in common besides cigarette brands? <laughs> so when I look at the answer, I said to myself, wait a minute. That's the way I've been living all my life. So before I share with you what I found, let me tell you a little bit about me. So I was always a very energetic person, you know? The way you see me right now, as a kid, like, it's like me, but on steroids. I was bouncing <laughs> off the walls, driving my parents crazy. And I went from this super energetic kid to a hospital bed with a 50-50 chance of survival. As a matter of fact, my mother told me recently, I didn't know that, but my mother told me recently that the doctor even took her to the side and told her to start praying because it wasn't looking good. So I remember laying down on that bed. I remember the things that made me happy. When my friends from school would come and visit, we would sit, we would laugh, we'd have a good time. When my parents, when my grandparents would come and visit as well, we'd play cards, share jokes. My grandmother would bring me food. She would prepare food for me. She didn't want me to eat hospital foods. And if you're from a different part of the world like I am, you know, it's customary to always come with food. You know, my mother always had a bag of food everywhere we went. <laughs> we could be in the middle of nowhere and we'd be like, God, a pizza would be nice right now. She would pull a pizza out of her bag. <laughs> Hot. <laughs> she would even have popsicles in case we wanted something cold. Not even the real kind, the whole orange juice that you put in the freezer. You know what I'm talking about? We always have food. A few weeks being in on the bed with tubes coming out of everywhere, I remember I said, I got to move my body. I cannot stay like this any longer. So as soon as I made that decision, I, I start walking. I said to myself, okay, I'm gonna, just going to walk from my bed to the bathroom, which was from where I'm standing to the first row. Not very far. I did that for a few days. I felt better. From there, I was able to walk in the hallway to the TV room. And I did that for a few days. And from there, I was able to walk out the front door of the hospital. Now, I remember, and I know for sure, that there are three things that saved my life that day, or during the time I was in the hospital. The first, my grandmother's cooking. The second was when my friends would come, when my family would come, sit down, have a good time. And the third was movement, just moving my body. Now, you're probably asking yourself a very, very deep question right now. What kind of food did your grandmother make? <laughs> huh? There were foods that were based on the Mediterranean diet, on the Mediterranean lifestyle. Now, I was born in Casablanca, Morocco, which is a country in the Mediterranean. So I know a thing or two about the Mediterranean lifestyle. So what is that mythical character, the Mediterranean lifestyle? What is that? Is that a diet? Is that a lifestyle? Well, in essence, it's a lifestyle, it's a mentality, it's, a, it's the way people think in those countries. 
You see, people living in the Mediterranean countries, they don't think about weight loss. They don't think about, oh, I got to look good in that bikini or that speedo. I got to be ready for that wedding or that high school reunion. They don't think like that. They think about being healthy, being happy, and it's about quality of life. You see, in our country, and I'm sure other countries in the world, we go the other way around, right? We think about weight loss. We got to lose some weight. And the only time I'm going to be happy is if I look a certain way. It shouldn't be that way. And we've all fallen for those commercials. Lose 10 pounds in 24 hours. You see that guy, that older gentleman, run on the beach in slow motion, six-pack abs. There's always a beautiful young woman by his side, right? By the way, guys, that woman is not after your abs. She wants your house. <laughs> we've all fallen for that. And what happens when you try that program? It doesn't work for you. What happens? Right? You start stressing. Is it, am I the only person that it doesn't work for? You start stressing. What happens when you stress? What happens when we stress? We produce cortisol. Exactly. Cortisol is a stress hormone. Now, cortisol is okay from time to time. It's a, it's a natural hormone. You know, it's, we need that because it's a fight or flight. We need it. But we, when we keep having it in our bodies over and over, what happens? We start having some negative effects. What is one of the negative effects of cortisol? Why well, lowers your testosterone levels? What happens when you lower your testosterone levels? You can't burn as much fat at, at rest. Another effect of cortisol makes you accumulate more fat around your belly area. That's what we don't want, right? Another effect of cortisol, it makes you hungrier. Hungrier for what? Fruits and vegetables? No. Fatty foods, sweets, salty foods, all the foods we're not supposed to eat. We're doing it in reverse. It's like driving your car to work in reverse. How many cars do you think you're going to hit along the way? Right? <laughs> Now, to understand better the Mediterranean lifestyle, let's look at the Mediterranean food pyramid. Let's look at it. Now, it's a typical food pyramid with the biggest part at the bottom, and it goes all the way to the top, to the smallest little part. Look what's at the bottom. It's not a food. People exercising, moving their bodies. People sitting at a dinner table, enjoying conversations. Remember conversations? <laughs> you don't see a guy in a car going from meeting to meeting with a sandwich in his face, going fast, right? No, it's people enjoying themselves, quality of life. That's the biggest part of the Mediterranean food pyramid. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why would they put non-food items in a food pyramid? It's a food pyramid. Well, that's because those non-food items will impact your health as much as the healthy food you eat. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you the American food pyramid. I'm going to show you two of them, an older one and a newer one. So the one in black is the older one. Typical food pyramid again, biggest part at the bottom, it goes up to the smallest part. Now look at the new one. Look what they've added. Movement. Now they're realizing movement is important, right? That's an improvement. And I cannot wait to see what goes on after that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a parallel between the American lifestyle and the Mediterranean lifestyle. All right, we do live here, so I want to do a little parallel. So let's look at the differences in both lifestyles. In the American lifestyle, it allows for more animal-based products. We eat a lot more meat. In the Mediterranean uh, you know, diet, red meat is eaten only seldomly. As a, as a matter of fact, if you look at the Mediterranean life, uh, food pyramid, red meat is all the way to the top. Why? Because red meat is inflammatory. Inflammatory foods increase cardiovascular diseases and diabetes. We eat on the go. We always eat fast over here. We're either at our desk eating quickly in a car going from meeting to meeting in front of a tablet, in front of a phone, in front of a television. We always, time is money. We've got to maximize every second. In the Mediterranean, we take our time. We enjoy a meal with people we love, with friends, with family. And studies will tell you that enjoying a meal and having conversations at the table will affect every aspect of your well-being, intellectually, mentally, physically, emotionally. Kids that participate in conversations at a table have better grades. We have bigger portions in America. We know that, right? Between 1977 and 1997, the size of a burger increased by 23%. Soft drink sizes increased by 53%. People don't walk with bottles of soft drinks anymore. They walk with barrels. <laughs> we love to buy in bulk in this country, right? We go to Costco, buy 30 gallons of ketchup. Why? Anybody needs 30 gallons of ketchup? <laughs> a lot of it is processed. The concept of processed food does not exist in the Mediterranean countries. We don't buy bulk. We buy fresh for the day or for a few days. And we snack more in America. 
compared to in the Mediterranean countries. I'm going to give you a little, little uh, trivia. 27% of millennials snack. Why? Because they're bored. In the Mediterranean countries, the meals are so wholesome. You don't have the need to, 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 uh, to snack. So now, what I want to do is I want to compare the Mediterranean diet with some of the other popular diets that are out there right now. All right? So let's look at it. Let's start with the low-carb diet. We've all heard about it. It comes in different sh uh, shapes and sizes, right? Now, let's look at some of the uh, things that come with it. Initial weight loss. Absolutely. You're going to lose some weight. Why? Because you're cutting an entire food group, right? You're cutting all the carbs. So you're cutting, in essence, calories. But I'll remind you that those initial, like a lot of that initial weight is going to be water. Now, what happens long term? Starts tapering off. Why? Because this is not sustainable. How could you go your whole life, your entire life, cutting entire food groups? Any health benefits to it? Sure, you're going to get some. It'll lower your bad cholesterol, increase your good cholesterol, lower your blood pressure. Rank number 34 out of 40 diets. Let's look at the paleo diet. We've all heard that, right? What is the paleo diet? It's a diet that is based on how cavemen ate. Thousands of you go, who would want to eat like a caveman? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> But that's how cavemen eat. How did cavemen eat? Well, they, ate, they ate a lot of meat. They ate a lot of, of, of seeds, a lot of nuts. Any initial weight loss? Sure, because again, you're cutting a food group. What are you cutting? You're cutting grains. You're cutting a lot of legumes, like beans and, and, and lentils, right? Because that was during farming, and th those guys <laughs> lived pre-farming, right? Long-term weight loss tapers off, stays stagnant. Why? Because it's not something that's sustainable. Again, you're cutting an entire food group. Any health benefits? Yeah, a little lower your blood pressure, one of them. Rank number 30 out of 40 diets. Intermittent fasting. Heard about it, right? What is intermittent fasting? Well, it's a, it's a way of eating. You eat for certain periods of time, and you fast for certain periods of time. Initial weight loss. Absolutely, the most of any diet. Why? Because you're fasting. <laughs> Long-term weight loss. Start tapering off again. Why? Because apparently many people find it hard to fast and to eat, to fast and to eat, to fast and to eat. It's very hard. It's not sustainable. It's about sustainability. Any health benefits? Yes. Anti-inflammatory, lowers diabetes, chances of diabetes. Rank number 27 out of 40 diets. Now let's look at the Mediterranean diet. Initial weight loss? Yes, absolutely. What about long term? For sure. Why? Because it's sustainable. Besides processed foods, you pretty much can eat anything you want, following certain guidelines, of course, but you're not cutting any food groups. Any health benefits? So many. Lowers chances of coronary diseases, lowers chances of stroke in women, certain cancers, androgenic alopecia, which is hair loss. That's a good one. Uh, it lowers also your risk of depression. Also, it, it uh, gets rid of fat over here. It lowers the chances of acu fat accumulation in your belly area. Also good for the mind. Lowers your chances of cognitive decline, like Alzheimer's and, and uh, dementia. So many. Ranked number one in the world. Now, I'm not making those, those numbers up. You can find them. US News, you can find them. The, those numbers are on the internet. Now, let me ask you this. If you had to follow a certain diet or a certain lifestyle, would you follow a lifestyle that is ranked 34, 20, even 5 or 2? Or would you follow something that's ranked number one? Not one year, not two years, not three years, not four years, but five years in a row. So now you're telling me, oh my God, Laurent, this is fantastic. <laughs> How do I go about doing this? So what I did is I came up with seven different tips. Seven tips that if you follow them, you will be able to live like a Mediterranean, even in this country. Now, you don't have to follow them all at once. You can start with one and then slowly add others along the way. Number one, focus on being healthy. It's not about weight loss. To me, weight loss, looking good, feeling good, energy, energy level soaring, that these are all byproducts of being healthy. Be healthy first. Number two, have more meals with family and friends. Make it a point to get together and have family with friends a couple times a week, three times a week. Eat more fruits and vegetables. These are anti-inflammatory. Make sure that you eat them in season. Cut down on processed foods, the given. These are full of, of, of sugar, of fats. You don't need them in your diet. Drink less alcohol. <laughs> People in the Mediterranean enjoy 
alcohol, but they do it in moderation, right? My philosophy is a little alcohol is better than a lot, but no alcohol is better than a little. To me, there are no benefits to alcohol. Move your body every day, all right? Now, it's great to allocate an hour to do your exercise every day, but if you're going to sit for the rest of the day, you're missing out on some of the benefits of, 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 of just getting your body in movement. Every so often, just stand up, walk around the house, walk around the office, take the stairs, just keep your body moving. That's how we are built. That's how we are made to keep moving. And the last one is my favorite one, most important one to me, enjoy life. At the end, it's about quality of life. Don't dwell on the small thing. Don't stress over the small little things. Everything is not about money. Everything is not about work. Take the time to, to do things that you always wanted to do. A few years ago, I decided I wanted to do stand-up comedy. Am I, am I good at it? No, I suck. <laughs> I get more crickets than laughs. But you know what? Every time I get a laugh, it just kind of pushes me to go back again on stage and do it again. <laughs> Enjoy life. It's about quality of life. Seven tips. I promise you, you follow those seven tips and you would have unleashed the secrets of the Mediterranean lifestyle. Thank you so much.